Welcome back to Two and a Half Coaches, and um, this is episode three, and today we'll, we'll be talking about recovery, recovery. And, finals. and finals. And finals. Nice, Keith. What up, mate? Just Good start. job. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway. So far, so. <laughs> so we thought we'd do a quick podcast. Obviously, a couple of weeks out. I've even got like a bit of a countdown on my phone in terms of obviously more towards the rugby league, rugby union crew. finishing, so you're on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Week off, now. Um, but I know in terms of rugby league, rugby union crew, I think it's something like 46, 47 days out um, in terms of the grand final. Mm. Oh, grand final. In terms of grand final. So, obviously, NBL 1, I believe, is a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, August 10th, I yeah. think, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And then the national final will be the following week. Yeah. Um, and, um, but this week is the last round of regular season. So, finals, finals yeah. as a whole, or playoffs, start next yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, some of the soccer athletes as well some lacrosse athletes, mm. it's across the board, obviously everyone's getting quite close. So we thought it'd be a good time just to revisit this time because I know for us, there's a lot of athletes that will watch those grand finals. They'll sit there and wish they were there or mm. want to be there. And then they'll come to us full of motivation in the off season um, to obviously, which is again, what we're here for to help you with. But I think it's good just to reiterate, like now's the time if you want to make a difference to do it. I know in terms of our comps, there's a, quite a close comp. So all of our athletes have an ability to make a difference to make finals mm. and then ma- have a difference to actually get into the grand final mm. and potentially even win it. So we're at that pretty cool time where a lot of what you do from a day to day and then obviously most importantly on the weekend, it's going to influence whether you get success to finish off this year. Uh, so we thought we'd... Bronson's made his appearance in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just need one athlete in every single podcast. Just yeah, in just in the background. Um, we'll set it up to the squat racks in the background <laughs> next time. Uh, so we thought we'd talk about that today. So we thought we'd talk about like recovery. We talk about nutrition, um, like the big rocks, the one percenters. We talk about obviously outside of the gym and outside of that as well, mm-hmm. like uh, the IQ side of things, the skill set side of things, and what are we what are we trying to achieve in these last few weeks? So, what yeah. should we kick off with? Um, what do you say first? I think, like, like, like you just said, the the big rocks, like taking care of those, um, as much as those little one percenters are usually the flashy things, the cool things. <laughs> if you're not taking care of the big rocks, doesn't matter. It's not going to make as much of a difference as you think. So, prioritizing your sleep, prioritizing mm-hmm. your nutrition. Um, hydration those are probably like the three kind of <laughs> pillars per se of recovery so why don't we like dig into those a little bit yeah more? so so let's identify like the separation one percenters would be like your ice baths, ice baths supplements saunas. like yeah. more specific supplements yeah. um like recovery boots yeah. that kind of stuff yeah and then our big rocks obviously being like our sleep our nutrition our load management load man- as yeah. well in the gym which would be a completely different subject and also like just stress management as a yeah. whole because um, again like a lot of the athletes we work with are kind of at that semi-professional level yeah. so they're um, at university still they're at working part-time jobs or working full like, well, a lot of working full-time and also um, playing so how do you manage the stresses that come from life as a whole mm-hmm. yeah. and, and how that fits into the recovery piece yeah cool what should we start off from a big rocks perspective stress stress, stress. Yeah. Big one? I need burnout Mm-hmm. And burnout's a big one. I think towards, I think everyone starts a season always on a high and wanting, obviously, like you said, wishing they were there last year in the grand mm-hmm. final. And they start off the off season, pre season, so motivated going into the season. And when they start off the season, they're so motivated when the team's going well. But when you realise that you're not going to make finals or your team's not that great and you're losing, or I think even if you're just fighting to get into yeah, finals, finding, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I think. Or Everyone just, gets just the length of it if you've been going yeah, for so long consistently through off season, pre season, in season, like yeah. that's you know, close to a full year's worth of just straight training. I know like had conversations over the past couple of weeks with athletes about that and just giving themselves like a bit of a mental break. Um, so what would that, that look, what would it look like? What's a mental break? Just so. whether it's just yeah, taking a little bit more time away from the gym. Um, but then also from that load management piece, like I think, right, yeah. I guess all of it ties in together. But from that load management, we obviously don't want to just pull everything all together. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So again, it goes back to the big rocks. Like everything within the workout, we usually put in there for a specific purpose, but there's going to be things that are more important than others. Yeah. Um, so if you're not super motivated to the gym, it's like, all right, I know I just got to tick off these three things mm-hmm. rather than your normal list of maybe nine, 10 yeah. exercises. Um, I know these are the non-negotiables. And then if I'm feeling up to it, I'll get the others in. Um, same with your skills training, same kind of concept. Like, Because we, we could even then break it down into... Because what you're doing from a week-to-week basis now isn't doesn't have to be glued in. Mm. Yep. It can be pliable, it can move. So, like, that's one thing where we'll have conversations. Is, is I know, like, Sophie's a perfect example. Mm. So she's someone's got a high load on her at the moment. She's got the four staff. She's got playing two league and union, all that kind of stuff. So she, during the middle of the week, she has to have Wednesday completely off. Yep. So there's no gym... There's no rugby, there's no nothing off. Get away from the gym, go away, go to the beach, whatever it might be. So first thing you can probably do is just look at your schedule and go, can I potentially afford a day during the week yep. where I get to reset? Because you've got mm. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, gym a couple times a week. Like It's a lot of just frequency. Yep. Um, so that's one option we can do. Compounding. So like even like I know for one of my guys is quite a little bit demotivated so it's gym before Tuesday and Thursday yep. um, a little bit of a primer on Friday and then the game on Saturday so we get two days off there during the week so your scheduling across the week is there anywhere that you can and obviously we're, we're not just talking about gym we're talking about life stresses is there a day that's going to be much more ideal where you can get away switch off deload the brain a little bit and then switch back on yep. when you need to to get in the gym um, and then probably rolling into what you're talking about, like the actual gym mm. loading perspective. So, like, we obviously, like, and this is that poor intertwine where it's like we obviously need a relative load on the system mm-hmm. to because obviously the season's getting harder and harder, the games are getting more and more intense, and then we've also got the compounding fatigue of your, to- of your body. Mm. So we're getting to this point of the season where it's very vital that everything you do from day to day helps a lot. So we need to maintain a relative load on the system, um, but we can pull back volume. We can keep intensity in certain areas. Um, and whether it's with your coach or your own sessions, like what's the stuff that's going to maintain? What's the stuff that's going to help with the hamstring loading, calf loading? What do you usually get niggles in? What usually flares up? Can we maintain a little bit of that stuff? Mm. Um, but yeah, anything else you reckon? I think also just how you structure your week as well like not every day has to be like really intense really yeah. heavy so um, you know if you've got a game on a Saturday Sunday making that Monday like a little bit lighter like longer ISOs a bit more yeah. mobility work it, it could still be like pretty short sharp um, and it's just the focus is just getting feeling good and then we can switch up that Tuesday to be a little bit more intense just prior to training have Wednesday completely off Thursday like there's just so many ways you can do it and that's again where it becomes like very much for us it's a collaborative approach Mm. with our athletes what's their schedule like what's going to work best for them what do they feel works best for them Um, because at the end of the day the athlete themselves is going to know their body the best Mm -hmm. what what feels good for them so um, you know some guys do enjoy having a little bit more volume in the system Mm -hmm. others um, just prefer to really strip it back Um, but it's keeping keeping that chronic load on there so that the overall fluctuations in load don't change too much. Yeah. Um, and then just keeping sport as your priority. Yeah. I think, like, I know especially in seasons past when if I've been playing, like, if the team's not doing well, you're, you're personal, like, oh, I'm doing really well in the gym and you can, like, really focus on that, but then you kind of lose sight of what's actually important in terms of the, the sport mm-hmm. itself. Um, so everything you do at the gym should facilitate that and you should be feeling good going into training. It shouldn't be detracting yeah. from that and especially going into the game. Yeah, because we'll, we'll come back to that, like out, the sport mm. stuff, I reckon. Um, but at least hopefully that's a few points in terms of what you can do during the week mm. uh, and how you can manage. Because the whole thing is like all you're, all you're trying to do, and it's, it's, always, it's a very weird topic, but the actual term of fatigue and mm. feeling fatigue accepting that there's probably going to be a little bit at mm. this point in the season, mm-hmm. but can we actually see changes and potentially this is where the supplementary stuff like the saunas and ice bars give you those temporary mm. reductions in fatigue and if you can time these at the right times, maybe they can help, but it's obviously going to be that overall picture of the nutrition sleep and everything like that. It's mm. going to help. So 
if you can move your schedule around, if you can have some lower intensity days and some higher intensity days, uh, and just start to really find a good schedule for you in these last few weeks, it'll make a huge difference. Then from there, we're like, all right, we've managed training load, food. Hmm. Yeah. This is huge. This is like nearly everything. And hmm. it's one of those things where if we look at it from like a, again, there's caloric expenditure, there's micronutrient side of things, there's all this nutritional stuff. Even if we just look at it from a caloric load in terms of the amount of activity that you're doing and the, the amount of input that you're getting and my... my activity hand is higher than my food hand which is a little bit lower if there's a gap between those two you're probably going to feel some fatigue so you've got to ask the question first of all as an athlete most are you eating enough Mm -hmm. Uh, and this sometimes is a little bit tricky because it comes hand in hand with higher fatigue lower motivation lower desire to cook or prepare so this is where again you're good with this with some of your guys in terms of giving ideas for food and nutritional things and just chatting to your coach or finding resources to try and find some convenience if you need to. Uh, But you're going to need to get your food intake up because your output's only getting higher and higher. Mm. Output's getting higher and higher. Stress is getting higher and higher from sport, not from sport, which chews through energy as well. So you're at this point now where you, you, again, need to get your food up, uh, which obviously is in conjunction with with quality as well. Mm. Do you have, like, obviously with your athletes, you... You work a lot um, from that side of things about helping them prepare um, and manage that. Do you have any like key tips that you would use? Oh, I wouldn't say key tips, but like just getting to know your athlete in general is a big one, I think, for me personally. I think when you start having a chat to them about why they're feeling a certain way, you start picking up, okay, well, start talking about what do you eat in the morning or what do you eat in the afternoon, what do you eat before training, what do you eat after training, and you realise they're not actually eating enough. I think just a main conversation around that, you can actually get a lot of information on how your athlete prepare for, prepares for certain things. Yeah. So it's kind of like finding that, because you, you're pretty much right, it's usually because they need to eat so much, the frequency usually needs to be at a higher level than mm. most. Yeah. And for some people, it's only like they're missing breakfast. Yeah. Or they're not eating before they come and train. Yeah. Or they're finishing training at 8pm, so they're not eating before they go to bed. So it's like a bit of a self-reflection on your day or again, a conversation with your coach, like where am I not? getting a good dose of food in mm. why am I not getting in am I not motivated do I not have something prepared and then from there a plan of action to try and yeah. add something because mm. you've had again we've all had it where you add in some food before training add in some pizza pieces oh, like oh my god so I feel good. amazing I have energy now <laughs> why don't I do this all the yeah. time <laughs> I don't need an ice bath and a sauna or whatever mm. it might be like genuinely like I just need a bit yeah. more food um, yeah, I think preparations, obviously the biggest one. Yeah. There's definitely a conversation I've had with a lot of athletes over the past few weeks as if their work schedule gets busier mm-hmm. as in conjunction with everything going on with their sport. It's just being prepared and having options to just be able to quickly grab something that's mm-hmm. like of high quality as well. Because um, obviously, generally speaking, the things that are easier to grab quickly like not going to be as beneficial at um, ticking off those things that we want. Um, from macro and micronutrient standpoint um so just being able to prepare like a little bit even if it's just preparing a snack or something for every day so i know i have something quick to grab before i go to training Mm -hmm. um preparing preparing a lunch you know a few days in advance so then i know when i'm at work i can i I don't have to think about that Mm -hmm. and it just kind of offloads a little bit of stress i think you go first. Yeah, I was going to say, like, with food stuff, I think finding something that you actually enjoy eating is a big one. Yeah. I think it'll keep you actually wanting to eat it. Because I think a lot of the times you look at a lot of nutritionists and stuff like that and they make you eat the same thing every day. I think that's where it goes wrong with the athletes. Because mm. I think most of us, like, most of the athletes in here, I think they work full-time jobs and stuff like that. They get bored off the same things every day. And if you get them a couple of options and go, oh, try this, try that out, it's a trial and error. You're never going to like it all the time. But when you find something that you really like, for example, Mason loves bagels now. <laughs> no we, need, we need to get him away from the bagels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just bagels, only. Kind of bagels, bagels <laughs> well, right. no, no, maybe. But, the, but there's, <laughs> there's merit behind, obviously, variety. There's a, there is, like, actual... No, um, microbiome, so yeah, there's a lot of, like, support behind in terms of getting variety, but it's not just, I think, from a health perspective, which is big, yeah. but it's also from a, like... And I think that's most of the game of nutrition. Is it's from the head, it's the mindset it's side of things. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. big. Um, but I thought I was like, let, let's paint a bit of a picture. So 
let's say, let's use a gaming analogy. So you, you get to the weekend, you go to the warm up, you're feeling a little bit like flattish. You know that feeling where you're like, oh, I just feel lethargic. I feel a bit yeah. blah, whatever. Get into the game and you just like you're fatiguing out a lot quicker. So you're, you're trying to, what might be, trying to run through contact. It could be trying to even shoot because there's obviously a skill set but a standpoint in there as well. Like from a nutritional perspective, the carbohydrate side of things is a, like it's a much faster resource of fuel. So the way it processes through gets turned into energy. It's a fast acting uh, uh, energy availability. So most of the time, if this is a takeaway from this week, if you could add in some pre-training, yeah and pre-game carbohydrates and I just want to use some examples like we've had some of our guys and girls as well from both perspectives any, eating anywhere from like 500 to 800 grams of carbs some a little bit lower like but that carbohydrate side of things and it's not all carbohydrates fats have their place protein has their place um, but from a performance perspective shout out husband oh. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to everybody hooning through um, but from a performance perspective, the carbohydrate side of things will be massive. So if you can get some fast-acting carbohydrates, you could, a couple hours before training, have things like some bagels, have things like some toast, have things even like cereal has been demonized a fair bit, but yeah. like having some cereal, and then a little bit closer to training, having some sports drinks, having some fruit, having things like that before you train. I reckon if you did have like a, an easy meal 90 minutes before mm. and something quick 30 minutes before, you're going to feel 10 times better. So it's probably a bit of a takeaway from the nutrition side of things. Mm. Get your carbs in, get your food up. Um, it's gonna it's gonna go a long way, and get some variety into it as well. Yeah. Um, Make sure you eat your fiber. Have your fiber. Have your fiber. You're gonna yeah. go look at that poo. <laughs> <laughs> three episodes it's taken. We get cancelled oh after God. three. Just make sure you show Keith. He's um he send, wants send Keith photos of your poo. Don't say it. <laughs> Next topic, we have sleep. sleep. Which is probably and now these will be in your dreams. <laughs> I'll be in your dreams. <laughs> oh, that is very poor for recovery. <laughs> it's just going to watch the views just go... Do, 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 drop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, yeah, sleep... You can't get around sleep. Sleep's a big one. And obviously, this is a whole podcast in of itself. Um, but it's just one of those things where the schedules is all these kind of these situation scenarios if you can just take it as a priority and it, it's genuinely probably going to be like a little bit of the more you talk to people it's a bit of an uncomfortable change mm. most people delay getting into bed or if they're in bed they're on the phone or whatever it might be like hey if you need to watch netflix and helps you get your sleep is what it is but i think if you really want to push your recovery side of things and you're getting into bed at 9 30 not falling asleep till 10 30 because you're distracted or whatever. Like, if I, I know for me, like if I read a book, I read like half a page and I'm out <laughs> cold. Whereas if I sit on my phone, I'll sit on my phone for an hour. Yeah. So it's like, you've got to just be a bit of an adult and have these conversations mm -hmm. with yourself about what's going to work the best. Um, and then all the little bits and pieces like the room temperature, it's winter now, so it's perfect. It's easy to get to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, light exposure, all those other little bits and pieces. But I think nasal the- Nasal strips. Nasal strips if Mouth you need tape. them. Mouth Hell tape. yeah. Great for Keith because it shuts him up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time. Um, but I think sleep's just one of those ones where, like, you know what to do. Yeah, yeah everyone knows what to do. Yeah. So, well, maybe not, but most yeah. people know what to do. Um, but, yeah, and just try to get yourself a bit of consistency across the week yeah. as best as you can. And I think, like, there's obviously a lot of things around consistent sleep and wake times, that kind of thing, and getting yourself into a rhythm. Um, but a lot of athletes are working on less than ideal schedules with late trainings and early morning starts with work or trying to get workouts in the following morning. So it's just trying to make the best of your situation um, and just always making it a priority. So Naps as well. Naps, I think the most yeah. underrated thing as well. Keith is Number early. one. <laughs> if you're on split shifts or whatever it might be, like I think it genuinely is underrated. And then... It kind of shows you can't really catch up on sleep, but if you need to have a bit of a sleep in on the weekend or whatever it is, mm. like, that's not a given fact. But just try to get a bit more sleep in. Try to get yourself feeling a bit more recovered. Um, and just be mindful too that if, let's say this week, you go out and sleep a few extra hours during the week, sometimes people feel a bit more groggy because mm. they've actually had that reduction in stress load. They're mm. not running on stress hormones anymore. Um, so just be mindful of that and just do everything outside of that nutrition as well mm. to get on top mm. of it. 
I think sleep does play a big priority. Like, if for us, I think I feel like ever since we started changing, right? so I'm glad you think it's <laughs> a big priority. <laughs> well, for us, like what we're talking we, about <laughs> when we when we used to coach to eight o'clock, the and then we wake up at about five thirty and started coaching at six thirty. I think when we started pushing that a bit earlier, when we finished at seven and got home a little bit earlier, mm-hmm. and sleeping a bit earlier as well, I think a lot of us felt a lot more awake. <laughs> And functional during the day, didn't have to take too many naps, so which is good. Always take naps. <laughs> That's good. Take if, naps if, if the coach is arrested, then we can do our job a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coaches, coaches prioritise their sleep too. <laughs> uh, what else we got on there? Uh, so like, there are big rocks. Obviously, yeah. sleep and nutrition. I think sleep and is an obvious one. Mm. Nutrition is one of those ones you've got to have conversations with yourself yeah. or with coaches or whoever's around you. I think hydration as well kind yeah, of fits under that nutrition, under that nutrition piece and especially, I mean, personally as someone who's a very big sweater, um, like making sure post-game, again, it's that motivation or like I get home from, if I get home from training at nine or something like that, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to drink like one and a half litres of water before I go to bed and have to wake up three times to pee. Um, but so like, again, having that planning and forethought, like I'm trying to get a bit more electrolytes and fluids in throughout the day in anticipation of the fact that I'm going to be sweating a little bit more. Um, and from that performance side of things as well, like having all of that, like, mm. again, fueling your body adequately from the carbohydrate point, from the just food in general, but then also that electrolyte standpoint, just fluids in general um, in preparation. I think with that as well, I think people don't realise how much sweat they lose, especially with a game. Mm. Especially with footy when it goes for nearly two hours and basketball, yeah, right. like about two hours and rugby about an hour. I think people don't realise how much sweat you, you lose. Like if you weigh yourself in the morning and then you weigh yourself post-game, you're going to feel like there's a big weight loss and you lose a lot of water weight. And I think mm. we started doing that with Trinity where we got them to weigh themselves once and then to weigh themselves post and then had a chat to them about why they're cramping so much during the game. What had been what what was lacking in our preparation? I think hydration was such a key factor mm. in why the boys were cramping in about the second quarter in, mm. and we started adding more like carbs and glucose, like like intra workout snacks and glucose jelly beans helped us a lot to get through in the past couple of games, which is pretty cool. Mm. And then guys that actually want to actually have that during the game as well and actually feel good because some people don't like Powerade because of that gamey taste it mm. leaves in your mouth. So. Finding stuff that actually works for you as well, that kind yeah. of helps. And so the weighing stuff's obviously like, you take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, there's many things that can alter that, but it's just, a, it can just be, sometimes you just need those objective numbers just to be like, oh, even geez. if this isn't yeah. 100% accurate, it's just like a little bit of a, hey, you need to get some water in, but you probably touched on it then, where it's like, especially for most of the power aids and sports drinks and like stuff like that, they're usually a little bit too rich. Mm. So if you can usually get the powders and then, and then dilute, dilute the water yeah. a little bit more mm. and the carbohydrate solution to the water ratio is a little bit better. It'll go down a bit better. You won't get that sticky taste in the mouth as yeah. well. Um, and then the other thing too in terms of like carbohydrates and their effect on yeah, hydration, hydration is big. Yeah. It's underrated. So if you just did what we said before where it's like get some pre-carbohydrate training, pre-carb- pre-training carbohydrates... We need our lunch. Um, <laughs> we need our carbohydrates. Yeah, but our my carbohydrates. glucose is depleted. Um, <laughs> And then Instant you get that hydration in as well. You're going to be in a pretty good position. And if you haven't been doing that all year long and you do it over the next few weeks, you're going to feel a lot better. I think that's another big point as well, leading. Try um, not to introduce too many new things mm-hmm. as well. As much as we are giving these recommendations, like trial this at training, trial this like before the gym. I know like a few of the girls that we've had, like they've been trying to get a few bit more food and it's like, don't try something new on game day. Because yeah. if it doesn't feel good, that's not when you want to be feeling like a bit more Especially lethargic or, or you feel like you're a bit nauseous because you've added a little bit more food. Mm. So yeah. um, when you are introducing this stuff, like try it with the gym because that's like the easiest, the most controlled environment. Then try it with training. Then try it on game day if you, if you find something that works for you. Because yeah, you usually get that. You'll get like... Most people are, they get quite anxious and game day nutrition is not a perfect world situation. If you can stack up those carbohydrates on the Friday before the game day, it's going to help a lot more. Mm. Um, but absolutely take that in with a grain of salt in terms of, like I know some people just don't eat yeah. a lot on game day and it's like if you can stick, keep a bit of fluid. But then even like explore different options. Like it could be something like as plain as like rice, cake, rice cakes and honey or something. Mm. 
like it's something that's dry it's not going to give you an upset stomach like if you need to do things like this we can add it in but um absolutely on those less uh, less stressful situations like tuesday thursday yeah. uh, we can start it there um but that's obviously like our big rock side of things we've spoken about like our training load side of things um we'll probably go into just one percenters and then finish with the skill set side of things yeah. Uh, but then you do, like you've got your one percenters and everybody in the strength and conditioning field will say this, but obviously you want to focus on those big rocks first. Yeah. Um, but these are an accessory and these are a tool that can utilize. Like I know for myself, like I'll jump in mainly an ice bath, not from the training perspective, but what it does from a headspace. Mm. Like it's a clear thought process. I can't think about anything else because I'm shivering my ass off like... If, if there is situations like boots or saunas and ice baths and they help you genuinely to switch off, there's situations where you can't hold your phone for five, 10 minutes and it deloads your brain a little bit, that can be an, an accessory. Yeah. Um, but if you're having a sauna and you're dehydrating yourself and not being topped up with fluids and um, not you not staying on top of your nutrition, mm-hmm. like it, it could be adding or if anything, just not doing anything at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's a, a, a big thing that particularly with ice bath and sauna is that's still a stressor on the body yeah. so you've got to kind of factor that into your overall load throughout the week like doing a one hour sauna every day is just going to completely deplete you of fluids that you need to replace adding a lot more stress on the system so mm-hmm. still being smart with that kind of stuff and as, as with everything it has its time and place um but yeah if you're not doing it like if you're doing it and it's that one percent to get that to get that one percent like you also want to be doing it well Mm-hmm. to get that 1%. Um, otherwise, you're either doing nothing for yourself or potentially having a more wrong. detrimental... Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So just trying to time it well, like it could be like, like, yeah, like is post-game day a smart time to hop in a sauna when you're already dehydrated? Like, or even pre-game day. <laughs> yeah, genuinely. Um, like is it better to wait till the middle of the week mm-hmm. where you've hydrated, you're fed, and then you just have an off day and you really just want your mind to unswitch and, and things like that, like... Um, and then even going a little bit wider than that, like guided stretching, yoga, like things like this, uh, even if it's just on your own, but just... Pilates. Yeah, it could be, again, you know, change too much, but um, just any of these, I can't really think of any other one percenters, but um, any of these other bits and pieces are definitely, at this time of the season, if you've mm-hmm. used them, and you've Can used them well, them. yeah. If you haven't, then just be smart with where you place these in, because uh, it's going to be those other topics that we spoke about. Um, and then in terms of finals, I'm going to assume that we'll probably just, like, close out, like, the skills mm-hmm. side of thing. And I think this is a big piece. And we, we've had it especially a fair bit where you've got people that are hyper-focused on the physical development side of things, mm-hmm. which is good. We need that piece. But then you don't forget to watch game tape. Don't forget to watch film. Don't forget to do your skill. Like, it's this peaking side of things where it's, it's the IQ, it's the tactics, it's the skill set. It's usually a lot of these pieces that will be the difference between scoring a try and not scoring a try. Yeah. Uh, getting a goal, not getting a goal, like missing whatever it might be on top of that physical development that we should mm. already have there. Um, so making sure in the next few weeks, if you've got 46, 47 games till, 47 days till grand final day, yeah. it, cliche, it's going to matter. Yeah. So getting on top of your skills game footage etc yeah I think with that one like with rehab guys especially like I know it's hard being on the sideline just watching I remember when I was injured for a year just seeing the sideline just watching and not being able to get involved but it's also like you can get the physical side in the gym but if you're injured let's just watch them tape you can still learn a lot from the game and I think at the end of the day you can be as physically prepped as you, you want but you have to play to be good and you also have to be IQ wise to win games. I think that last 10, set, 10 minutes when you're up by, uh, when you're down by one point and that one play makes a difference and you know what to do in that one play, I think. It's funny too because it's like usually the most smart, the, I guess it's a different topic, but like the smartest ones usually have like the lowest numbers on. Like if you're efficient, it yeah. obviously means it costs less, so you're smarter with how you do things. Yeah. So therefore, you're not burning out as quickly, you're not fatiguing mm. as quickly. So it's like, by nailing your efficiency at this time of year, you're actually going to reduce that fatigue side of things, yeah. depending on how intense the game's going to be. Um, but, yeah, we think that's obviously a big piece. 
Mm. And that side, there's one of those things that's like, yeah, it's a 1% of like, well, probably more than a 1%, it's like a 10% of like throughout the the season, but then that becomes even more so, especially when um, like in going into finals, you're playing these teams again for the third or fourth time. Mm. You might have to play the team multiple times in order to get through a certain round, that kind of thing. Yeah. So having that edge on the opponent by having a really well-rounded scout, like knowing knowing the opposition, um, all that can just exponentially improve results and, again, put yourself in a position to express your physical qualities and everything that you've developed throughout the year yeah. as best as possible because I know, like, you know, all the, yeah, without going into too much detail, but, like, you know where you can express that as best as possible. Yeah. Mm. And then Bobby just touches on that point where it's like, don't forget to train the most important thing, which is that mind. Like, if you need to, as those, as those one percenters, like, if you need meditation, mm. if you need these other bits and pieces where, like, you're going to get to see grand finals where someone has to step up to the tee and kick a point to, to win, like, to win it by one point or something like that. Like, if you can start to learn any of these pressure moments, start training that side, visualisation, all these uh, little extra bits and pieces... Mm. Um, if you're in a pl- position that will potentially have a scenario like this pop mm. up, it could be ideal to, to, to paint that in as well. Mm. And then just coming full circle again, like that can help with stress management, yeah. all that kind of stuff, like prior to going to sleep, like doing some breath work, doing some meditation, just to kind of put the mind at ease before you try to settle down to sleep. It's going to be a lot more beneficial and you'll probably get a bit better quality sleep as well. Mm. And not as much as that duration of sleep is important, the quality is important too. 100%. Uh, anything else for finals? Have fun. Good luck. Yeah. Have fun. No, I, no, but as January much as the, yeah, this is like we kind of touched on at the very start, this is what you've trained all off season, all pre season. You've worked all season for. Enjoy it while it's there. Um, like we said, like you know, a handful of people aren't going to be in that situation. They're going to be s- sitting on the sideline, or other teams going to be watching you, like wishing they were in your boots. Like enjoy it for what it is. Like it's not guaranteed every year. Mm. Um, and make the most of your opportunities. Hundred percent. If you guys have any more questions for us, feel free to shoot us a text or even text. Keith's no, no, number. No, no, Keith's phone number will be in the show notes. One eight hundred Keith Law. Uh, but feel free to set, shoot us a t- um, message on Instagram or Perform HQ or. Why don't we do a, a Q&A? A Q&A. So yeah, Q&A can be in a couple of weeks' time. Get to know your coaches. Ask, if you want to know Isaac's age, ask me. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take the microwave. Clearly like 15 you... years older than you. <laughs> so, yeah. If you have made it this far, again, drop your favourite thing about Keith. Um, oh, I could do a different one. I could do oh, a different yeah. for this one. All right, if you made it this far... Comment on Keith's latest Instagram post, which is probably three months ago. Yeah, maybe longer. Um, I'm not sure. Comment, uh, comment, comment an, an emoji, emoji of a fruit. Oh. Yeah, very specific. Comment an emoji of a fruit that you think best represents Keith. <laughs> we know exactly what that could be. Eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs>